We have Joel Mcadar with us. Uh, first time on TV, Joel. It is. It is. Uh, Thanks for having me. How are you feeling? Uh, a bit nervous, but I think uh, I had a chat with the boys for a little bit. So We're I'm quite better. friendly, aren't we, Harry? Yeah, very, very. Until we, till we talk about agents. Okay. No, I'm joking. No, it's going to be good. And you, you work for so Lev Entertainment is your company. Uh, yes, it is. And you work with Stone Mountain Management yes, as well. Yes, indeed, indeed, yes. Right, and you're from where originally? Uh, so I'm Israeli originally. Right. Uh, moved to Mexico when I was little. So was raised in Mexico. Then moved to America, lived there for eight years, and I've been here for almost eight years as well. So I'm almost as British as I am American. Yeah. How did you How did you get into the agent game? Um, <coughs> so basically, I started a lot of agents. What they do is they try to get into the brokerage game, which is um, try and kind of sub represent players at the high level, try and speak to clubs, and kind of get in between a deal that way. Uh, what I did was when I got to the UK, finished my sport management deal. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, degree. degree. Yeah. Uh, and then what I did was I started kind of shadowing agents that could kind of that had some time for me and that I could take some of their young players and get them trials in places because maybe they didn't get a deal after the scholarship or they got a scholarship extension or whatever maybe. And then kind of went up from there, started working with more agents, more agents, got some of my own players. What was the attraction um, for you to become a football agent? Honestly, I wasn't good enough to play professional and by the time I was 16 I sort of decided that I, I, I was I may be better in the background, kind of making someone else look better than, than myself. We've all thought that at various times in our career. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just thought that was the best route to do it. Um, so I set my sights on doing this. How much do you think, I, I think an agent in a way, obviously you got the players, I think, do the majority of the work, right? But I think, how much do you think an agent should be a mentor and not so much about, you know, X's and O's and, and money? How much do you think yeah. that an agent should be a mentor? Because a lot of agents obviously want to get big moves and make a lot of money as well. I think the best relationships are the one where they're almost like friends in a way. Sure. Yeah, I think especially when you're looking at, say, younger players, for example, uh, they do need someone to, to kind of look up to, to, that they really feel that it's going to manage their career in a way where they're going to be able to grow with them and be with them for a long period of time. Uh, when you look at the older players as well, they... They look at some of them look at it as more of a, a job, right? And they're looking at they're looking for someone to kind of um, help them understand how to navigate a, a job, just as if you and me and whatever job we have. Um, so I think that's something interesting that I learned over time, especially dealing from young players to older players. It's interesting because we we were talking earlier on um, outside before we came on air, and I, we, I was talking to you about agents, and, and you. You said, oh, if it was me, I wouldn't have an agent. I'd have a friend or someone like that to do the job for me. And you actually said, if it was me, I'd pay a £1,000 to the PFA. They've yeah. got the best negotiators. Fantastic. They do the deal for me. Yeah. Professional Football Association look after their players. It's unbelievable. So why, why would a player need an agent rather than, say, their brother, who you can give 5%, 10% of the deal to? They make a load of money, keep it in the family. And it works for everyone. Right, so when it comes to the family, uh, and your family will have your best interests at heart, um, and this is obviously professionally, not personally, the, the brother or the dad might not have the know-how of how to do the best deal, how right. to get the best deal out of the player. What does the best deal mean? Maybe there's some clauses within the contract that you can... That you can well, that's why you need a lawyer, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. But the lawyer, like sometimes the lawyer reads through the contract. The agent has been through this before. And on the pitch, certain things can happen where an agent can go, actually, this is more of a realistic scenario for this to happen, let's at this delete that, especially when it comes to maybe goal assist, renegotiation of salaries after promotion, renegation, whatever oh, maybe. Jake, goal really? assist, you know, you have to <laughs> laugh, it's scary, isn't it, really? You, you give them, you sign them on and then they want mo more money for, I signed a player once and uh, a top player, fantastic player, and uh, we'd done the deal and he wanted a goal bonus, he was a striker. I said, well, what do you think we're paying you 50 grand a week for, <laughs> to miss him? <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like scary, isn't it? You know, it's a fair point. I'm, I'm sure you try and negotiate a goal bonus for your strikers. I mean, look, like when it comes to say something like goal bonuses, the fact is that like the market we're in is the market we're in. Um, for for example, a striker, he might have had in your situation, he might have had offers from somewhere else, which maybe did include a goal bonus. And in that sense, that player now you've that has set the bar for the contract that that player He's in a position yeah. to ask for it, isn't Exactly, he? yeah. So when he goes to the other club, if, which he might, you know, he, it's what he's going to ask for. And at the end of the day, what we're there to do is look after the players, look after the players' best interest. Uh, yeah. I think the interesting thing, in, in Germany, a lot of the contracts weren't guaranteed. So basically, depending on how many games you played, 
then your contract gradually went up, which mm. I think is, is great for the players. I think it's great for the club. I think when the contracts are guaranteed, sometimes it takes away a bit of the initiative of the players because they have the contract and then they can sit tight. But I think for the young kids coming through, you know, if you played five, played 10, played 15, played 20, and then gradually your base salary started to go up more. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a fair reflection of, of performance. And I think sometimes guys come over and don't play. And then I think that's where fans get a bit of frustration. Uh, yeah, incentives. Big yeah. bonus. You, you play. If you're playing, you're in the team, you're starting. You get a bonus. Harry, I remember my first year, we won, the, we won the league and the Champions League. I was on like a reserve team contract. I made more in bonuses mm. by far than I did in salary. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I was obviously we were blessed because there was a lot going on. But I just couldn't believe the fact my life just changed in the blink of an eye. And I was still on a, on a youth team contract. And I remember Rummenigge said to me, we're going to do a new deal because you've outperformed your one. I think that would be nice. You know, I know it's a dream, but that would be nice in football if... Because I think you see a lot of those young kids at Chelsea, they're on deals that they haven't really yet earned, not playing enough games, and then they never really, sometimes they almost drift out the And the problem we've got, you see, with young kids, when you give them big money, say you're at Chelsea, for instance, and suddenly you're getting your 20 grand a week or whatever crazy money that's... Is, and then you want to get them out on loan. They've got, you've got to go and play, son. Go Good and luck. play. Now, who's going to pay them wages? Mm. So, you know, you're going to, not going to drop into a load. Of, they can't pay the wages. And now, when they loan players out, I've said to you before, the big clubs now want loan fees for players. So when you loan a player out, if you loan a player from a big club to a championship or Division 1, you, you want a loan fee. You also want a bonus. If he doesn't start, you pay double his wages. This is the, what we kept running into every time we try to get a player right. from a big club. This is, this is clubs imposing this on this other clubs. This is not agents, no. This isn't agents. No, not agents. Isn't that a madness? Yeah, of course. That the club doesn't think, do you know what? I've got a player here and they might be on 20 grand a week, but I'm not going to play them. Instead of asking a championship club or a League One club to, to pay the 20 grand a week, why don't you say to the championship club, do you know what? This player's not going to play under me. He'll improve under you. He might actually double his value to us. That's all I did. We, we, them, all them years ago at West Ham and I did Lampards, the Ferdinands, the Foes. Go and play. Carrick, go and play. Go and Joe. Oh, Joe Cole was the only one we didn't loan out. Glenn Johnson, go and play. Yeah. They all went out on loan and played. Didn't bother about wages. Go to Swansea and play, Frank. You don't have to name names, obviously, no. but there is, in a, there is this feeling in football at the moment that players are absolutely money-obsessed. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a young player, he won't sign for a club where you think he'll develop more on five grand a week, he'd rather take the 20, 25 grand a week and play for a club where you might think he's not going to be involved. What do you do in that situation? Look, for, I guess, like, what, why agents exist is the premise is that we're here to level the playing field, OK? Um, for a young player, for example, we can't realistically expect for that young player and his dad, mom, fam family, whoever it is, to come in and try and negotiate the best deal for himself with a club. When the club has lawyers, accountants, whoever, you, like, looking, at, looking, yeah. looking after the, the, that deal. So what we're there to do is to make sure the player get the, gets the best deal. Um, is the best deal, though, yeah. the most money per week in your right. head? No, no, no. 100% no. Right. When it comes to a young player, the goal is the first team. Okay? Always the first team. If he's going to move to, and if he's going to move to a club at 16 or if he's going to move to a club at 18, 19, 20, 21, it should be to the best, to the club that's going to give him the best opportunity to play first team. Because mm -hmm. after that, if that player, if that player gets that opportunity, and you, you guys know this better than me, if he takes that opportunity, for example, a striker scores a goal on his debut, okay, and keeps scoring and keeps scoring, it, it can only go up from there. That is the best advice for, for a young player. But that's, think about all the young kids right, in these big academies. They're, as Harry said, they're on big money. But actually, the best thing for you to do is play. You go to the academy because you, you you know, you're going to get a higher wage. But the best, look, look at Deli Alli you know, playing at MK Dons. Look at all these young kids going to Germany. But that, you know, it worked the, out for Deli Alli though. There are lots of players where it doesn't work out. And three or four years later, they're saying to you, I had 15 grand a week on offer. You made me sign for two because you thought it was better for my career. So it's a very But Jake, as a player, you've got to back yourself. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The player at the end of the day, it, uh, like the, the decision was made mutually. Okay, the ambition of the player was to go play at X place. Mm. Okay, he goes to play, it doesn't work out for him. At the end of the day, like you said, the player needs to perform on the pitch. If the player doesn't perform on the pitch, then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But it wasn't a bad decision necessarily, unless there was something like a manager that was coming in yeah. um, that you know you didn't foresee that wasn't going to play the style of the player, or whatever it may be. But, it doesn't... You Joe, know, if someone came to you then, and yeah. there's, there's two clubs, yeah. there's this club here that the player, you think, well, it's a good move for him, mm -hmm. and there's the other club 
that is going to give you a massive agent's fee. They say, listen, bring him here, Joel. Bring him here. I'm the chairman of this club. Bring him to us. We will give you a massive agent's fee. Mm -hmm. what, would, what do you do with your player? Great question, Harry. I... Joel. Your agent's fee is massive. <laughs> this is, I'm giving, Joel, we are going to give you, Throw in the kitchen we are sink. giving you a million, mm -hmm. it's a million pound if you okay. bring him to us. Don't yeah. take him there. Mm -hmm. I know they're only going to pay you 100,000 pound mm -hmm. agent's fee because their chairman won't budge. I know he's a tough man yeah. and he doesn't like paying agents. I'm going to give you a million quid. We want this kid. Okay. Okay. Tell you what, we're in the business of, at the end of the day, looking after the player, not looking after ourselves. That's what we're there to do. We're, look, we're, we're looking to fulfill the ambition of the player. The ambition of the player is to play first team football. Mm. Okay? If, in your example, I'm getting paid 100 grand on the left and a million pounds on the right, okay? if the player is going to play first team football on the left and I think that that player is going to deliver, it's a, it's a risk worth taking because at the end of the day, the player's ambition is going, it's hopefully going to be play for a bigger club. In that case, I can fulfill that ambition and at the end of the day, get paid well over a million pounds if that's. You know, if that's this doesn't happen across the board, though. I remember I had no. this conversation with a Man no. United player who came through, who played a few games, <laughs> and we were in the weight room one day, and somebody said, uh, "Coming in for a new deal." And I remember myself and somebody else who was real said, "Don't ask for more money right now. Let's be the worst thing because it's just going to annoy everyone. You keep performing the way you are. Trust me, money's going to come much more than you're asking for right now. Keep chipping away, and it, and it will come. And I think to your point of obviously you can take a million in the short term, but maybe you know that hundred grand over the long term you might generate quadruple that. Yep. But that's the gamble you got to take, isn't it? Would there be another payday with this player? Or is he going to, suddenly I'm getting a million pound yeah. agent's fee. I'm, I'm going to have to have another four moves before I can earn that sort yeah. of money. I'm yeah. only thinking of where agents are coming from. Not, not, everyone's different. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's the business, isn't it? You know, I, I think, and you would know this better than me, there's the good ones and the bad ones. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's of course, the quote, of course. Unquote, bad ones that would take, of course. Uh, take the payday. Oh, absolutely. So it needs to be regulated to, to outlaw that kind of thing? Uh, well... That is. I don't know if you can how you regulate yeah. Jake really. The player, you know, see, the player should say, "No, listen, I don't care where you want me to go. I want to go and play for this team. That's where I'm going." I think I think regulating okay. that aspect yeah. um, is is difficult. Regulating other aspects, perhaps not so much. But yeah. at the end of the day, that's a decision that was made and was made.